In this video, I'd like to go through a variety of examples of calculating work so that you can see how this goes. Um, so in the first example, we're just going to imagine that there's some block that is sitting on the ground like this. Um, and I'm going to assume that you are pushing on the block like so. Um, so you're applying a force to the right, and let's suppose that the object actually moves to the right as well. Okay, so in this case, um, perhaps we have the force is equal to three newtons, the displacement is equal to two meters. So when we calculate the work, that's going to come out to the force times the displacement times the cosine of zero, which is just going to be six newton meters. Okay, now at this point, um, I want to point out that newton meters that we get for um, work are different than the newton meters that we got for torque. Okay, so um, it happens to be the same um, name for the unit, but they are actually different. And the difference really kind of boils down to, um, in the case of work, we have um, newtons dot meters. And in the case of torque, we had um, meters cross newtons. Um, and so it kind of, you know, is due to the fact that we had a different mathematical operation that we did between them. Nevertheless, um, just be careful not to try to combine those different kinds of units together. Um, additionally, we have a name for the newton meters that show up in the case of work. Okay, so we call these joules. So the unit is uh, capital J, and if you write it out, it's J-O-U-L-E-S, like so. Um, joules are only appropriate for work, never for torque. So just be really careful not to make that mistake. Okay, so let's do another example now. Suppose that we have a block, like so. Um, and this time I'm going to still have it moving to the right, but maybe this time you're trying to slow it down. Okay, so um, you're pushing on it like this, trying to keep it from moving in the direction it's moving, applying a force backwards. Okay, so in this case, um, you know, let's suppose we have the same size forces. Here, the work is going to be negative six joules. Okay, you're removing the block's ability to, you know, pound in nails because you are slowing it down as you apply this force. Okay, um, so uh, let's do another one. Suppose that you have the block and it is, again, still just moving to the right. But this time, let's say that you're applying a force that is downward. Okay, so maybe you're just sitting on top of it. Um, so your force that you're applying is going to look like that, which is 90 degrees from the displacement. Okay, so in this case, the work that you're doing is zero because we have a cosine of 90 degrees uh, in the formula. So that comes out to zero. Okay, so in this case, no work is being done. All right, so um, these are sort of um, the three basic cases. You can do positive work, negative work, or zero, which we had seen before. Now I've just drawn pictures to accompany those um, arguments. Let's do a couple other cases, though. Um, let's suppose that you are just pushing on a wall. Okay, so this is the thing that you can do. Okay, so just pushing on the wall like this, you're applying a force. Um, and even though you're applying a force to the wall, maybe you feel like you're working really hard. You know, you could be getting sweaty, you could be, you know, um, burning calories in this process. Um, if the wall doesn't move, then the displacement is zero. Okay, so no matter how much you feel like you're doing work, in this case, the work is going to come out to zero. All right, so um, the word work can be a little bit misleading um, because there are things that seem like their work, um, you know, from a subjective point of view um, that aren't by the physics definition. And there are things that seem like they're not work by subjective point of view that physics says are work. So uh, we just have to be careful to make a distinction between what the definition of work is in a physics context um, versus what seems like it's work um, in, you know, real life. Okay, um, so let's um, consider another case. Um, let's consider the um, Earth exerting a force on the moon. Okay, so the moon goes in a circular orbit, like so. So at any given moment, its velocity is going to be like this. But Earth is exerting a force on the moon that is this way. Okay, so at each instant, the moon's displacement is going to be perpendicular to the direction of the force that's exerted on it. So it turns out that the work that the Earth does on the moon is going to be zero because the angle between the force and the displacement are zero. Um, let's do another example. Suppose that I take an object, um, like just a stool, and I'm going to pick up the stool, and then I'm going to move it forward, and then I'm going to set it back down later. Okay, so um, I want to consider what work is being done in that process. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to split that into three parts. So first we lift the object. And while I'm lifting the object, the displacement is upwards, um, but there's more than one force on it. Okay, so let's consider the different forces. There's a gravitational force on the stool by the Earth, and there's a normal force on the stool by me. Okay, so um, as I'm lifting the object, I'm not like flinging it upwards or something. Its acceleration is basically zero. We can assume I'm lifting it at a constant speed, which means that the normal force and the gravitational force are equal and opposite because um, it's not accelerating. Okay, so based on that, I can tell that um, in this case, me, um, I am doing um, positive work, but gravity is doing negative work. Okay, so the gravitational force is downward um, while the displacement's upwards, so that's negative work. Um, for me, I am applying a force upwards and it's moving upwards. What about when it moves sideways? Well, while I'm carrying it, the um, free body diagram looks exactly the same. So it's not accelerating, it's just you know moving at a constant speed. So the normal force and gravitational force are equal sizes opposite directions. And this time the displacement is to the right. So here, work done by me is zero and work done by the earth is also zero. 
Okay, so the gravitational force is doing no work, and the normal force is again doing no work. What about when I set the object down? So as I lower the object, I'm going to have again the exact same free body diagram. Okay, if it's moving at a constant speed, then um, I'm not allowing it to have any acceleration. So this time the displacement is downwards, which means that the work done by me is going to be negative, and the work done by gravity, or the work done by the Earth, is going to be positive because gravity and the displacement are both downward. Okay, so you can see that in each part of this process, there's positive and negative work done by different forces, and that will usually be the case. Um, and the signs can vary over the course of the total motion. So in order to understand what's going on, you have to break it up and consider each part separately.